Welcome back to the lab. Today, Nick is holding the camera. That's not tight at all. Come on, Holden. Loud noises. Does it look foo food? That's enough. Well done. We've been cleaning. It's good. Not stoned at all. No, we had, we had the doors open. Always use good ventilation when using products such as this. It says on the back in the fine print that it's bad for you. So we've been doing that. These have been cleaned. New bearing cones, cups. What are we calling these bits? Yes. Outers, cone. the it's rings. Cone. I'm sure whatever term I use, someone on the internet is going to tell me that it's a different term. So new ones of these have been fitted to these thingies here. We have the, the corresponding part here. Brain spanking new ones. They go in here like this. We haven't done that yet. We'll do that. It probably takes a little bit more force than that. But that's the general idea. You put that on there and do that. Same with this. Tub aside. It's good. Main case has been cleaned. I, I wouldn't lick that, but it's pretty clean. It's not bad. So we're just trying to make sure we don't have lots of contamination in there. There wasn't a lot in there anyway, right? It wasn't particularly bad, but it's just good practice just to clean it before we put it back together with our brand new bearings and instantly put crud in them and ruin them again straight away. So we've got that far. We're waiting uh, tomorrow morning. We shall have the the bearing that goes here, the big bearing. We've got the small bearing, but of course we can't put the small one in until we put the big one in. We could put the cone, the outer, in here. I might do that tonight when you're driving home. Yeah. Um, and I can probably put the seal in there. We've got the seal as well, so that could go, and there's no reason why not. So the reason we're not doing this all now is because we couldn't get all of the bits we needed today. Yeah, we've got are we seventy five percent or something. There's a there's a couple of roller bearings, needle roller bearings that go in here that support the shafts. These ones. This goes in here like this, and there's a needle roller that runs in there to support the shaft as well as the diff head being, or diff carrier being supported by these bearings here, which is an interesting way to do it. Why not? Nissan don't do that. No. Nissan have a, a tight fit between that shaft and the inside of here to support those shafts. It seems to work. People break them, but it works. We also did something else off camera as well. Well, we did a thing shafted watched a youtube video on how to do it no we didn't we just knew <laughs> we, we, we didn't watch youtube at all no we just no we did we did how uh, how much were the bearings for the diff and then how much was the cost for the bearing for the drive shaft for your average holden <clears throat> so for all the bearings that we bought for the diff to do that whole job including some free coca-cola and six cans of brake clean we've only used two two was enough but including that we're at a grand total of 428 dollars and 33 cents so take, and take yeah away the cans of, of stuff that we haven't used you're at 400 dollars for your bearings to do and that's that's good quality for that reputable brand uh, rather than dubious quality coming from an unknown source and marketed at X price because that's what the market dictates. Not having to go any brand in particular. Um, hanger bearing, including a courier to get it here so we didn't have to drive into the Tron with the traffic was $155.25. Yep. Not too bad. No, it's not bad at all. Um, a tank of petrol in your ute is... It's going to be more than 155 bucks, isn't it? And you put that component in your ute, and it's done 280,000 Ks, unless it's been changed in the past. So That one hadn't. Yeah. So 150 bucks divided by 280,000. 
It's not very many cents per kilometre for that particular <laughs> component. It's pretty good. Um, same for the diff, you know, it's, it might be 500 bucks, 280,000 kilometres. Uh, you're getting down to a very small digit per kilometre for maintenance on it. So, And especially when you're going to drive your car the length of the country. Uh, tow truck from Invercargill back to Tauranga. No thanks. Expensive for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no thanks. So we'll get it right. So you're going to assemble this for me while I'm away a little bit, and then I can come back uh, on Saturday or something like that, and we can finish her off. Well, it depends if you want to hold your phone and watch it. We, could, cause... we need to tell the story for the people. Oh, I think that's true. So I'll put a couple more pieces in today, because it's pretty, it's pretty boring just putting that on there like that. We'll do that, and then we'll uh, we'll wait for the rest of the pieces, and you can come back, and then we'll put the rest of it together. Are we going to put a banana in there as well? Um, That's what people do to make the diff tighter. Yeah, there's some mandarins. The mandarins? You reckon the mandarins would work on the tree out there? Yes, that'd be fine. Perfect. Mandarin yep. skin. Oh, Citrus. We'll eat, we'll eat the, the actual mandarins. That's a great idea. I feel like a mandarin now. Well, it's been an interesting day. Thank you very much. Okay, I've uh, just arrived at the lab and we're gonna get this diff put back together today. Okay, here's Glenn's car. Glenn! Hey, Glenn! What? He's put it back together. We're supposed to film putting this back together. Penis. Glenn! You're supposed to wait for me to film you putting it back together. That was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, but you knew I couldn't come yesterday. We're supposed to... So, so, resisting that joke. <laughs> resisting the joke there. Uh, so... What happened was... What are you dr so, drinking? Oh, toxic. Jesus. Toxic stuff. So uh, what happened was I had to go and put some stuff together in something somewhere else over there. And it was not far away from where these guys are. Waikato bearings. Who had the rest of our bearings that we needed for our differential. So I did the thing over there. Got the stuff. And brought them back and put them here. And then yesterday I wanted to do some stuff on that. Primarily I wanted to put the other wheel on that. But then I realised that the bench was a little bit not a bench. So you lied to me? Yes. How's my career, po um, poli poli political career going? As I'm practising for my speeches. Am I doing good? So what happened was I didn't want to wait. I wanted to put all that <laughs> stuff inside there so that it was one thing there rather than that there, that there, that there, that there. Okay, well, I, look, I am grateful that you've already put it together and you've... So, um... How, how, okay, so reason we wanted to put it back together was because, you know, talking things up and talking up those yeah. things and stuff. Uh, yeah. But what did you find? Did you find any uh, information like I didn't really. specs? Someone's going to come along in the, in, the, in the comment section and they just, because everyone knows the answer, right? Yeah. Everyone. Someone's going to come along in the comment section. And go, I am everyone. You need to go here and this is all this information is here. As I did spend a considerable amount of time on the intervals looking, trying to find the appropriate information. Yeah. And in the end, I decided that just common sense and experience was sufficient. So I've put it back together, assembled it with sufficient... Well, it's a Holden. Knowledge. It's it's a Holden, not a Bugatti. It, that is correct. That is correct. And I found many comments on many Holden forums and things like that that were suggesting that if you mark the nut in here relevant to the flange and then you take it all apart and you put it back together and you make sure the nut goes back onto the same mark on the flange, <laughs> that that would be sufficient. Yeah. Of course, there was no comment saying that you need to make sure that you put the flange back on the exact same orientation on the splines because... Yeah. Because that's moving that. There's a whole heap of things. I was just like... 
Well, you need you need Holden. We're we're not going to find the right information from Holden owners. <laughs> not being rude, Holden owners. So you need a drag talk. I did find there was some specs for a what do they call that tool? Breakaway talk, basically. So how much torque it takes to get the thing to move and start rotating. Um, I took it with a grain of salt. Assemble it with common sense. Yeah, so, okay, so let's say I'm Joe Average and I'm going to get my diff rebuilt. You know, you'd send it to someone like yourself or a shop or whatever. Preferably a diff specialist. That's, yes. Yeah. That's, that's going to be the place to go. But this is not the first diff that I've built, but I don't build many, many. But uh, if you take, this is the free play in the spline into in? the diff centre. That's, that's how much you've got there. Let's listen. Yep. So that's that with slop trying to drive the centre. So if you load them up against each other, that takes that out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And then we can figure out how much free play we've got. And it's that much. It's, it's a lot less than it was, that's for sure. It's heaps less. It's about the right amount. You can't have them 100% bound up with no free play. Expansion, contraction, room for fluids. You can't. There has to be some free play. There's generally a given amount. I'm not going to throw a number out there because someone will argue with it. But there's a there's a amount and it transfers across most diffs. Most diffs in cars are about the same size. The amount of free play that you're going to want is about the same for all of them. Generally. Some will argue against that. Okay. Hey, whatever. This, this will work. Yeah. It'll be good. Can you do this at home? Or do you, you you're probably... I wouldn't recommend it. No. It'd be pretty hard if you don't have what is basically just a couple of steps further than what the average garage will have at home. Because I've got some screwdrivers and a drill. I mean, if I suppose... I've actually got more than that, but... If you've got a hammer and a drift, like an aluminium or a brass or something like that, some sort of soft material so that you're not going to damage the bearing races, then, then you can cut them off with an angle grinder or you can use a MIG welder or a TIG welder to get them out. But your margin of perfection is going down. It is. You get what you... Dramatically. That's my new word. <clears throat> so the phrase, you get what you pay for, yeah. Um, so you purchase something and the more you pay, the better the product is, right? And it's kind of the same sort of scenario with this. The better the gear that you have to do the job, the better the result. I've got the tools to take it out, but I don't have the tools to fix it. So you take Glenn aside and you put in an experienced Holden technician who assembled the diffs in the factory in here. Uh... There, there'd be some fine tuning towards the end that may improve slightly. And then you actually put him in his actual assembly room in the factory for making the diffs. Yeah. And there you go. It's going to be done a lot faster and it's going to be minty perfect as, exactly as per what the factory would do versus a couple of mates smashing it together in the workshop at home on the weekend. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. This is actually your video, so maybe you should do the outro. Thanks for watching. Go look at Nick's videos. Cheers, bye. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And, and ring my bell. I'm in the bell. Your support helps support me support you. <laughs> <laughs>